And how do you get to the point where you can solve math problems that you've never seen before? That's a very general question. More specifically, how do you get to the point where you can solve math problems related to your class that you've never seen before? And this is an important question, right? Because if you take a test in any math class, there is a chance that you will see questions on your test that you've never seen before. So how can you get those questions right if you've never seen them? We're going to address that in this video. I do have an answer and it does work, but it's not easy. So it's not easy. This video is 100% inspired by an email I received from a subscriber here on the channel. This email is very good. That's why I wanted to make this video and it's important. So I'm gonna start by reading their email and then doing my best to answer it. If you have any advice for this person, leave a comment in the comment section below. I'll leave their name out of it. The subject is simply practicing for a test. This is a really good question. Hello, Math Sorcerer. In a lot of your videos about practicing for tests, studying, and doing well in your math classes, you always mention being able to do practice questions cold without the use of external resources, 100%. My question is wondering if you meant being able to do questions you've never seen before cold or being able to do questions that are familiar to you cold. You see, I studied very hard and was able to do all questions that I have seen before or similar questions cold, but when it came to questions that I hadn't seen before, I wasn't sure how to do them and it cost me marks on my exam. Just how far does my knowledge need to be in the topic in studying to ace my exams? Should I be on the level of being able to do, teach the class to ace the final? Thank you. So this is a really good question. And the answer is it's going to depend on your teacher, right? It depends on what questions your professor puts on your test, okay? So some professors will put harder questions on there. Um, in graduate school, I had a professor. He put five questions on the test and we got to choose three. And I, I swear, I had never seen any of those questions and I had no idea how to do any of them. I somehow passed the test. I got two out of three right and the third one I got some partial credit. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was close. The point is, it depends on your professor. So when I say make sure you can do everything cold, I'm talking about the questions in your homework, the questions in your notes, okay? So focus on those. If you're in graduate school, okay, if you're in graduate school, then it's advisable for sure to go into your book and do extra problems or go into other books and do extra problems. As an undergraduate, this is typically not required. And I mean, you can do some extra ones if you have time, but you know, focus on what's being presented. If you see some questions in the book and they, they look like good test questions, do those, even if they weren't assigned, okay? However, doing the questions is, is one part. Understanding them is another. So I, I think a lot of times when, when you're learning and you're trying to get to the point where you can solve everything cold, what you do is you end up doing a lot of memorization. Like you end up memorizing steps, which, which is fine, but at some point the learning has to take place. So sometimes learning comes through memorization. So you memorize the process and then you start learning, you start to understand more. In my experience, because I've always tried to do this, I've always tried to make sure I can do everything cold. Sometimes, just like you, I go to the test and I see a question and it's a question I've never seen before. And then I'd get it wrong. So I'd go home and I'd look at that question and i say, how'd I get it wrong? This is nothing like what we did in the homework. But if you look at the solution to the question, so if you look at the answers to the questions you got wrong, a lot of times the solutions in those proofs and stuff, they are very similar to the proofs that you had in your homework. I just remember in advanced calculus, AKA real analysis, which is the hardest, in my opinion, course an undergraduate takes, I distinctly remember I have my test still, getting questions wrong, and then thinking, no, I've never seen this before. How, how could I ever get this right? This is so confusing. Then I would go home and dwell on it, and then he'd give us the answers, the teacher, and I'd look at the answer and I'd say, oh, this proof is kind of like the proof that was in the homework, except it's a different question. So teachers aren't dumb, right? Most teachers, they will put similar questions on the test. So even though you were able to do your questions cold, the techniques 
in those questions, the techniques you used in your homework can be applied to your test questions. And this is usually the case like 99% of the time. I can, again, I can only think of one scenario, and that was in grad school, where like we saw the solutions to the test, and there was techniques on the proofs that I had never seen before. I'm like, what are they even doing here? Like they created like this descending chain of balls, and I was just like, oh my god. So, so you, you, it was techniques I had never seen. Usually not the case as an undergrad, right? So those questions you got wrong, usually, you know, the concepts were there, right? You just got to know the concepts and how to apply them. So how do you get there? Right, so how do you get there? Well, to get there, to get there, you have to reflect. Okay, and this takes extra time. Right? Again, this is why I always talk about my goal was to make sure to do everything cold and understand everything, but it's almost impossible to get there. You just get as close as you can, and worst case, you know, usually get an A or a B. But you have to reflect on your solutions. So once you finish your proofs, and you didn't, you didn't mention uh, what math classes you were in, but I'm assuming, I'm just gonna, I'm assuming it's proof-based, so I'll assume the harder stuff. But you have to reflect on your proofs. So when you finish your proof, you want to go back and you know reread the question. Do you understand the question? You know what's the hypothesis? What are you trying to show? How does every step follow from every step? Why? Why did you make the step you made? Why did you choose to take the maximum of that set? Why did you choose to create that inequality? Why did you start the proof here instead of here? Every step matters. Every reason matters. Dissect it, analyze it, overanalyze it, and that's how you learn. So that when you see a new problem, even though it's you've never seen it, you say, oh, oh, okay, it's talking about continuous functions. Oh, oh, it's bounded. Oh, I know oh, the monotonic convergence theorem. Okay. Or, oh, the intermediate value theorem. So you get ideas from the knowledge that you've applied in solving those homework problems because it's the same concepts. It's the same concept. So different questions, same concepts. And this, this destroyed me in analysis because advanced calculus teachers, real analysis teachers aren't dumb, right? I mean, if, if, they, have you, if they have you do a homework problem, they're probably not going to put the exact homework problem on the test. They're probably like, ah, I'm going to change it up to make sure they really understand what's going on, and then just memorize the proofs, right? And that's what happens. That's what happens, and that's why people struggle in analysis. Because not only do you have to finish all the homework, right? You have to really understand it. And it just takes extra time. Right? It just takes extra. It's hard. It's hard. It's incredibly hard. So, yeah, kind of a rant. Uh, but that's why. That's why. So you can do it. Keep, keep. Keep doing what you should do. Keep practicing trying to do everything cold. Just spend extra time reflecting on those solutions. And you'll find that the higher up you go in math, the more important it is to spend time reflecting. Like reflecting. I mean, I always think about induction. I had this teacher. And I, he, whenever he spoke, it was just like, I don't know, it was just like, it was like, all right. It was just very, everything he said was monumental. He could have said anything, like, let's order a pizza, and it would have been, it would have been monumental. He would tell us that whenever we were working through proofs, we should always go back and really reflect on every key step. For example, in induction proofs, you know, when you use that induction hypothesis, that step is key. Then you should also ask, well, why does it fall apart? It's, it's necessary to use the induction hypothesis in an induction proof. And without it, everything kind of falls apart. So you should do that same analysis for every step in a proof if, if you have time. Right? So the goal first is to get through your homework, finish it, get it right, try to understand as much as you can, get to the point where you can do everything cold. Then you want to spend some time reflecting on everything. For the reflection period, like the reflecting of, of, of your work, my advice is for your test. So what I used to do is I used to get up really, really early on test day, like 4 or 3 in the morning. And let's say I had to like leave for school at 7, so I'd get up at 4, 4.30, maybe 3, who knows? Just really, really early, right? And I would make coffee, and I would eat. I would have a really big breakfast. I, could, I don't do that anymore, but I usually wait a couple hours. But I would eat, just fill up some eggs and bacon and bread, and big thing of coffee, you know? And uh, just sit down and start doing math, right? Or, or have some coffee for a while, do some math, and then eat. Whatever works, but get to work ASAP, right? And just start grinding. And when you're looking... When you're looking at your notes and when you're going over your solutions prior to the test, you don't want to redo all of them, okay? What you want to do is you want to look, you want to look at your notes and look at your solutions and just go through them and make sure you understand the steps. If you have any hesitation or doubts, redo it. At the same time, since it's test day, you know, you don't want to burn yourself out, right? So control how much you write because you still have to go in there and take the actual test. I've actually overstudied prior to a test to where my hand was in so much pain that when I took the test, it, it, like, it hurt even more, 
So, yeah. yeah. Do whatever it takes, my friend. Do whatever it takes. Ever it takes. Math is hard for everyone. So, anyways, I've talked a lot. Do it cold. Reflect. That is the key takeaway. Does anyone else have advice for this person? Uh, any advice would be amazing. If you do, leave a comment in the comment section below. This is a, a great message because I think that people really need to spend extra time reflecting if you have the time, right? That's the thing. It's all about time. It's all about time. If you want to learn math, I do actually have courses on algebra, calculus, trigonometry, uh, not pre-calculus, trigonometry, calc 1, calc 2, calc 3, differential equations, advanced calculus, abstract algebra, etc., and like five more. They're all on Udemy, which is a reputable place to have courses, but if you get them, use the links from the description of this video. When you use those links, it helps me for two reasons. Uh, one, I've lowered the prices, so it helps you, and it helps me because otherwise Udemy takes uh, a really big cut. But yeah, check out my courses if you want. The key takeaway from this video is that, yes, yes, you should train to be able to do everything cold to succeed on a test and to really make sure you know math, but you also have to reflect. And honestly, it just takes time, right? It's all about practice and time. Eventually, you will get there. Good luck.